Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. In this tutorial I'm going to cover modelling a lozenge shape, whether it be a button or a or an opening on a product. Um, so in its most basic form, a lozenge, lozenge is basically a line, an arc, a line and an arc. Um, so in this, this example here, that's literally what I've done. I've, I've modelled a um, rectangle, added a full round to one end. If you're not familiar with full rounds, they're in the fillet options. You pick three faces and then it creates a tangent connection between three. And then I've just put a fillet around the top and I've mirrored it. Okay, so um, the issue with this is if I turn off my lines, you can see, well, I'll roll it back before my fillet, you can see the tangent break. Is this line here, which um, if you're concerned about surfaces flowing into each other smoothly, that's not ideal. That's because we're going the uh, curvature is going straight from being a line and then straight into the arc with no transition and curvature. So if I was to put on zebra stripes for this, you can see that that's where the curvature break is there. The tangent break. So there's other ways to do this. I've turned the zebra stripes off. You can see there this fillet I've put around the top. That's a um, that's just a circular fillet. If you put a curvature continuous one on there, you don't really notice the break on the top, but around the sides, you can still even on the fillet here. You can see a tangent break here because the fillet is, is is we're filleting over a surface with a break in it, a tangent break. You can see that sharp change there. So if you wanted to do something and not have that, it's actually quite straightforward. So I'm going to roll down here. And I will hide that first surface body. So I've created a sketch, much like the previous one, except in this sketch I have added an arc, which is like our reference geometry, because we're going to use a spline instead of an arc. And on the spline we're going to have a curvature continuous connection to the, to the line on the top and the bottom of our button. So I've added the arc here because I want to know how much material I'm actually adding or losing um, from a straight tangent or a G1 connection at this point because you will have to um, gain some material, lose some material to get a smooth transition. So you can see here in this setup I have a spline. This spline has seven point, uh, six points so. So it's got an end point, it's got a point here and a point here and these are all collinear with the line on the side here. Collinear means that that's a curvature continuous connection because that's a line and the two points lie on that line. Same at the top. So I don't have any uh, control vertices along here. So I've only got a dimension here which I can change because I've constrained the spline in the middle to this point here on the arc. Okay, so you can see the curvature here. I've started the spline 0.5 millimeters before the actual arc starts. So there's the arc. My spline starting back here. So you can see already I've lost this material in here. But I'm willing to um, I'm willing to give that up to uh, get a smoother connection. But anyway, let's see what that looks like. So again, extruded it. Show the body. Okay, so straight away in the shaded view there, you cannot see a tangent break between the planar face and the spline on the end, which is good. Turn zebra stripes on. You can see there I don't have the um, sharp break in the zebra stripes. That's good. And I've put a fillet on the top. 
And this fillet is it's just an edge fillet, but I've turned I've made it curvature continuous. Just to highlight something here that I notice going on in SolidWorks. Okay, so you think, oh yeah, that looks alright. I can't see a tangent break on the top there. Nor around the side there. Where it meets the um vertical faces. So when I was setting this up and I had the zebra stripes on, I noticed something. If you look in here, notice there was a discontinuity in the stripes across this boundary. You can see there. Hang on, there we go. So, so I ran a deviation analysis on there. Deviation analysis on the edge calculate and I've got a 0.15 degree deviation on a straight fillet on a very simple form. So um, just something to be wary of with SolidWorks. Um, using curvature continuous fillets, sometimes even on simple geometry, there's some uh, kind of big deviations that happen. Anyway, moving on. So that's my uh, one option. You can do it that way. So I thought, okay, let's, um, what if we add another point into the into the control sketch, see if I can make the curvature a bit smoother rather than it changing and then sort of flattening off. So in this one, I've set it up pretty much the same as the previous, where I have a an arc, which is a reference. I don't know how much material I'm either losing or adding. I have a spline, except in this spline, it's a degree six spline, it has seven points. So if you remember in the previous one I had Three points at the top and three points at the bottom. They were all collinear with this other top or bottom line. In this one, I've added one more control vertice and I've um, made it coincident to the center line. The spline is coincident to a point on the midpoint of the arc. And I have some dimensions here which, like, if you change, you can, you can see what's going on there. Make solid works. Okay. So versus the the sketch prior to this, you can see the curvature. Um, it sort of changes a bit more slowly. Whereas in the other the previous sketch with more point, uh, less points, it sort of uh, changed much more around the around the corner here. So this should be smoother. So again. Just extruded it up two millimeters and again you cannot see the tangent break um, and even when I put the curvature continuous fillet on it's still looking pretty smooth okay so that's another way to do it and now there's one other way I have set up which is where you you leave a section of arc in the middle on the nose of the uh, lozenge and then you connect that arc to the lines on the top and bottom of the lozenge with a spline. Um, so a bit more complexity here as you can see there's the curvature of the arc running around into the spline. The spline is a degree 5 spline so a Bezier spline, Bezier curve has uh, 6 points, 6 CVs and on this end where they join the line they're the same as in the previous two examples um, both points are collinear to the line whereas on the arc up here i can't go collinear to the to the to the, uh, to the arc i've used a curvature continuous constraint equal curvature and then i've dimensioned the spline points to sort of juggle things around and get them where I'm sort of happy with. So again, let's have a look at that. So I extrude it, show the body. Okay, um, so I can't see an obvious tangent break in there. And if we add a fillet, sort of a bit only concern with doing um, using this technique is if I turn on my edges you can see instead of having a single 
surface running around the end we've got three so then when you fill it that you end up with three breaks where you otherwise might have one um whether or not this form tracks more closely to the um the true lozenge with the line arc line um geometry not sure i don't i don't tend to do it this way i just thought i'd demonstrate it and mirror that over okay so out of those options i think my third one is my preferred which is this one which is using the spline with the point in the middle as well so sort of carried that on okay if you've got if you've got the spline then you can use that geometry to offset that geometry so as you can see here what i've done is i've offset my seven pointed spline to create say a, a button surround i just wanted to show what what things can look like where you don't have a tangent break so here with the chamfer if this was just a um a uh, arc around here connecting two lines at this point here you would notice the tangent break so that's curvature continuous across there and you don't notice it it's a bit hard to see because of the plane there we go so that's the break that's where the surface uh, boundaries are there Okay, and if I put a fillet on there, so that fillet is a curvature continuous fillet, but again, you don't see a tangent break across here. All just this is all driven off the um, sketch geometry that built this lozenge form. Okay, I'll just show you one more thing because this this button is looking a bit agricultural, just with a uh, with a fillet around the top. I thought I'll try something a bit more interesting. I'll just show you that like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a a crown top on this. Um, get rid of the big dumpy uh, fillet and put a, a nice arced crown on there. So I'm just going to copy some surfaces off this form. So I've copied the bottom and the sides. I'm going to hide the solid. I'm going to trim this in half with the right plane and then on the right hand plane I'm going to create an arc and dimension the arc with the amount of crown that I want then I'm going to extrude surface extrude that up to this vertex where the line ends and the and the uh, full round starts then I'm going to create a center line sketch where the crowning comes down to meet the apex so this is a degree three spline which means it has four cvs uh one two three cvs are collinear to the line of the top of the crown there i don't need to use a curve equal curvature constraint there because i'm matching to a line not to a curve okay and that comes down and i've got a pierce point constraint on this end and then i've just added some dimensions and curvature looks all right there really happy with that okay so next thing i need to create a plane across here so that's just a dimension offset plane and i'm going to create another arc through here on this plane so again this is just a simple arc that has pierce point relationship at each end and then it pierce point with a point that pierces that spline okay i'll show that and now i'm going to create a boundary surface um just to make this easier instead of using um Just to make it easier for my selections when I'm making the boundary because I'm going to be selecting this this boundary twice once for each end of a four-sided surface I've just created a 3d sketch converted entities of this edge here and then just trim them back 
and and put a on plane relationship at each endpoint. Okay. So my boundary surface is just a um, two curves in one direction and three in the other. So I've picked picked the edge of our main crown extrusion. I've picked the the arc, and in the other direction, I've picked one of the uh, th converted entities th in the three D sketch. I've picked our uh, center control line there. And then I've, again, I've picked the um, 3D sketch converted entities. And at the top here, the only constraint I have is tangent to face. Uh, and I've picked tangent to face with our extrude. Uh, I haven't picked curvature continuous because sometimes with SolidWorks, if your input curves are curvature continuous, then the surface will be curvature continuous without having to um, explicitly. Tell it to be curvature continuous. So now if I turn on my boundaries, ah, uh, not my boundaries, I'm talking about zebra stripes. You can see there, that surface, there's no sharp tangent break. So that looks fairly good. Okay, so to create this end, the end of the fingernail sort of area, uh, instead of using cheating and using a fill surface, because I don't want to, I don't want to have an, an overbuilt surface that's trimmed back. I want to use a four-sided boundary. I'm going to trim back the boundary surface that we just made. So I've created a sketch from plan view. It's just a simple sketch with a line, an arc, and a line. Which once I trim back the surface like this, will give us four boundaries to finish the end off. Okay, so again, boundaries, <coughs> excuse me, boundary surface, which has got, in the first direction, we have tangent to this edge, then we are using the sketch from earlier, the spline, and then again, uh, tangent to this edge, in the other direction, tangent to this trimmed arc, and then the outside boundary was um, just the position where you just pick it with no constraint. Okay, and again, I haven't added curvature continuous uh, to any of these. I've just added tangent because the input geometry curvature continuous, and sometimes SolidWorks just it'll just make the surface curvature continuous as well. I have increased the um, tangent influence in both directions to 100% because the surface was being created a bit flat. If I turn on the curvature combs. Um, yeah, there were just some flat spots. So anyway, so I cranked up the um, the, the ta tangent influence. Okay, and then I knitted this together, knit, and we'll mirror it over, and then thicken the surface, thicken it to make a um, solid. So I turn off my lines, and look, we'll just have a look at the top of this lozenge. Okay, so you can't see a tangent break. That highlight kind of runs along the middle of the extrude and then nicely peels off onto the ends. Okay, and that's all because of our geometry, that first sketch we had, um, curvature continuous around here, and also because of our, our central spline here, which is curvature continuous to ex extrude in the middle. Okay, I'll turn the zebra stripes on as well. So there's no big hiccups there, there's no abrupt changes in in the curvature, and there's no breaks in the zebra stripes. So that's good. And I'm just going to bring up the surround that I added. Okay, so that's, that's a fairly nice looking button. Um, you can apply this sort of stuff to a curved face, like a compound curvature. Um, setup's obviously going to be a bit more difficult and a bit more involved, but um, it's all doable. Um, just encourage people not to use an arc on the end of two lines as a lozenge, because um, I think the benefits of spending a bit more time, you know, it's it's, it's worth doing. Yep. So another tutorial, AJ Design Studio, Andrew Jackson, hope that was helpful, thanks very much.